Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Um, you guys did such a nice job last week with comparing fractions. I was very impressed with the work that we got. So keep it up this week. Our math goal for this week is students will identify and locate fractions using a number line. So you've used number lines since you were in kindergarten. So now we're just kind of identifying and placing fractions on that same number line. So today our freckle assignment is about drag racing. So drag racing is when two cars race on a road. Um, so the goal of today's lesson is that students will be able to plot, which means place and label unit fractions on a number line diagram. Take a second to recall what a unit fraction is. Good, you should have said a unit fraction is any fraction when with the numerator being one. So examples of unit fractions are one half, one fourth, one eighth, one third, one sixth, one one hundredth. It's one piece of the whole of whatever the denominator is saying um, that the whole is broken into. So we're gonna take a look at how to fill in this number line. So I'm gonna switch into Smart Notebook. And we're going to look at these number lines. Okay, so let's take a look at these number lines. Here we have whole, which are 0 and 1. So there's no need to partition that number line because we have two holes, 0 and 1. Here we have halves. What is the denominator we use when we're talking about halves? Good, the denominator is 2. So we have 0 halves here. Now here we need an a fraction that is equivalent to one whole. So we should remember that when the numerator and the denominator, the top number and the bottom number are the same, that is equivalent to one whole. So two halves is equivalent to one whole. Now if you're finding the unit fraction, one half, it would be between zero halves and two halves, which would be here, one half. Moving on to fourths, our denominator would be four. So we have zero fourths, our fraction equivalent to one whole would be four fourths. And now here, the next step that I like to take is to find and think about which fraction with when the denominator is four is equivalent to one half. So think about that. When we have fourths, what is one half? Good, two fourths is equivalent to one half. Then we fill in the unit fraction of one fourth, and then three fourths is between two fourths and four fourths. Now moving on to eighths. Our denominator is eight, so we have zero eighths. The fraction that's equivalent to the whole when the denominator is eight is eight eighths. Next step, find which fraction is equivalent to one half, which is four eighths. Next, let's look. It seems like we have a fraction equivalent to one fourth. Take a look. Which fraction do you think, based on how this number line is partitioned, will be equivalent to one-fourth? Good, two-eighths. Take a look at three-fourths. Which fraction on our eighths number line is going to be equivalent to three-fourths? Excellent, six-eighths. Now we find our unit fraction, one-eighth. Fill in the rest, three-eighths, five-eighths, and seven eighths. So halves, fourths, and eighths all kind of go together because you can see that there are some equivalent fractions. Now we're moving into thirds and sixths. So thirds do not have any fractions that are equivalent to eighths, fourths, or halves. So it's important to know that as we work with thirds, none of these fractions are going to line up with our number lines from above. So our denominator is a three, so we have zero thirds. 3 thirds is equivalent to 1 whole. We don't have 1 half for thirds. We don't have a fraction that's equivalent to 1 half. But we have 1 third and we have 2 thirds. As you can see, this number line is partitioned into three equal parts, our unit fraction being 1 third. Now let's take a look at sixths. Our denominator is 6, so we have 0 sixths and our whole is 6 sixths, which is equivalent to 1. Next, we want to think about what is equivalent to 1 half when we have the denominator of 6. Good, 3 is half of 6, so you should have said 3 sixths. Now it seems like we're going to have a fraction with a denominator of 6 that's equivalent to 1 third. 
Take a look and think about what that might be. Good, two sixths is equivalent to one third. What about two thirds? Which fraction with the denominator of six is going to be equivalent to two thirds? Excellent, four sixths. Now we can fill in the unit fraction, which is one sixth, and the rest of the fractions, which is five sixths. Okay, so now that we filled that out, we are going to take a look at a problem. Mrs. Mulhall ran one third of a mile. Mr. Mulhall ran one half of a mile. Kylie ran one sixth of a mile. Where are these located on a number line? So I'm gonna take a look at my fraction number line and kind of take a look and see where these are going to be located. So I have Mrs. Mulhall ran one third of a mile. So I know that this needs to bro be broken into thirds. So I know this is zero thirds. The end is three thirds. And then I have one third and two thirds. And I know Mrs. Mulhall ran one third of a mile, which is right here. Okay. Now we have Mr. Mulhall who ran half a mile. So I know that this is zero halves. This is two halves. And one half is right here. So Mr. Mulhall ran further than I did. Next we have Kylie who ran one sixth of a mile. I'm going to fill in zero six, six six, three six, one six. Two six, four six, and five six. And Kylie ran one six. So I've located where all of us ran. So Mrs. Mulhall ran one third, Mr. Mulhall ran one half, and Kylie ran one sixth of a mile. So I can see that Mr. Mulhall ran the farthest, Mrs. Mulhall ran the second farthest, and Kylie ran the shortest distance. So today, what you are working on is finding where the t speed sensors are located at various points along the course of a racetrack, one-eighth of the way, one-fourth of the way, and one-half of the way to the finish line. So you're finding those on a number line and showing me where these speed sensors should be placed, marking their locations. And if you want to challenge yourself, you can think of a place another speed sensor three-fourths of the way to the finish line would be placed. Where would it be located? So here are number lines you can use to get started. And as always, you should be referencing this number line page to help you with your work. Good luck.